Okay. The, now, I do the, uh, I do the, uh, so I'm, I, I go and I say, fuck it, okay, I'll buy these Congresses, it's only a couple of thousand bucks, and I got something to do, and I'll get in shape, I'll listen to a Congress and go for a walk. So I was one of the first people to finish the Congresses. Because I just sat, I get up and I fucking thing, and I get up early. I get up at like five, and I just get up and I take the dog and I go and I listen to three tapes and walk for an hour or two and do the thing. And I, so I got through the Congresses. And me, the Congresses are part of what got me out of Scientology. Because if you listen to those fucking Congresses, it goes like this. Hi, everybody, I'm LRH. I'm very happy you're here. Listen, I've got great fucking news. We've got clear handled. And he'll do this thing, and it's this new technology, and here's the realization, and this is foolproof, and this is it. And this is the, that's it, and now welcome to 1964. Okay, apparently, you know, because the fucking thing didn't work, and Dianetics didn't work, even though nobody ever said it didn't, but they always trying to perfect clear. Then the next Congress, and there were, what, 20, 30 of these fucking Congresses? Maybe about, I don't know, 200 hours or some shit? Every fucking Congress is... I got it this, now we've got clear handled. We finally got clear. And this is going on over, I'm listening from 1964 to like 1970, and they still haven't fucking handled clear, but they're selling you clear. And I said, what the fuck? That's exactly what they're doing to me now. I said, what the fuck? And I went back there and I'm talking to Dave Pettit, who's the head of CC, who now is handling my case personally. Personally, you know? He's in my house. He's at my fucking thing. We're taking walks. I almost killed him once. <coughs> I fucking took him by the tie and I was grounding him. But the, <laughs> I fucking, you know, Jason, please don't. Oh, God. I actually re secretly recorded it. It's funny. I have it on, on, on audio. Tape. But uh, the uh, oh, fucking thing, because he didn't want me to leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. I said, motherfucker, get out of the way or I will fucking kill you. And he wouldn't get out of the way, so I took him by the tie and put him down on the floor, and then I walked out. But because uh, it'll get you pissed. But uh, that's how mad I was. I mean, I was fucked up. It's one thing to feel unhappy from. I mean, I walked into Scientology. Remember, I was on the top of the thing. It must have been false, though. I mean, I was fucking happy, and I'm fucking unhappy. And they're paying me. They're making me pay to get fucked up. And they're, and they're telling me what's wrong with me. And that's another fucking thing. They won't tell you what the next thing is. And I'm like, you, you, believe me, it's good. So you got to fucking buy the thing for 50 Gs a pop or whatever. And it's wrong. Oops, made a mistake. We're going to do this now. I mean, you're fucking, are you fucking crazy? Do you see how stupid I was? Yeah, I mean, it's like, oh, my God. And that's the game. And I'm telling you, that's the game. So at any rate, the Congress has helped me out. Because I said, what the fuck? It's a... Because I, I never met LRH, and I figured he was good. I figured Scientology works. It's just these fucking mortals can't fucking give me Scientology. If Scientology works 100% of the time, this ain't fucking working, so I'm not getting Scientology. And that's what I said to him. I said, that's why I said you guys should give me the fucking money. It's one thing to make a fucking mistake. But, you know, let's say the last fucking 600 grand was a fucking mistake. I mean, there, I feel like I got a case because if Scientology works and they agree this didn't work, I bought Scientology, then you should give me my fucking money back. And there's nothing to indicate that they have any fucking hope for my case now. So I just said, you know, babies, let's just, and I, for try, I mean, it took me, I was trying to be nice. I mean, six, eight months, I was saying, why don't we just let me go? Just let me go. Just let me go. You know, I think it's better. You don't want to get into a whole fucking thing with me. And they would. And they had to keep changing terminals. Because I was, I mean, I'm talking about big fucking terminals. Because I would put doubt in their universe. Because you can't argue with my story. When you saw what happened to fucking me, and you're a trained auditor, and you look in my fucking folder, they fucked me up. You, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about insane. I, I mean, I'm mean like, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I've never been like that in my life. I walked out. I was like, hey, hi. I was never shy. I was never introverted or anything. I'm sitting there like. <laughs> I'm fucked up now, you know what I mean? And so, I mean, they fucked me the fuck up. Oh, you well, the way out's the way through. I mean, there's no reason to get in that room. Maybe that was the, the hidden deep shit. I'm looking at my kid. He's five years old. He's a happy fucking guy. He's not fucked up yet. He might get fucked up later. 
Are you sure you were fucked up? Maybe you were just PTS to an SP. Well, that's what I'm saying. And that's the other thing. I had this big fucking car accident. In the middle of OT5, I nearly died. I was in a coma for three and a half weeks. I mean, I was fucking, like, everybody thought I was going to die. So, of course, we got to find my PTS terminal. That happened eight and a half years ago, okay? And I got out of Scientology a year. In the last seven and a half years in Scientology, still no fucking PTS item until I finally said, it's you guys. And they couldn't deny it. I said, look at the data. Are you sure it's not that person? He's gay. I mean, I, that, that, that's what somebody told me. I mean, that's how naive some of these people. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, what do you call it? An RTC terminal, which is like the, 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 the gold standard of technical perfection. And that they think, that's a, gay, a, gold, a, a homosexual. So they believe that homosexuals are all 1.1. They still believe that. There's some that do. I never believed that. I read, I interpreted it differently. But it was something where I had to do some mental gymnastics in order to make work. Well, that's what Hubbard wrote, though, that they were 1.1. Well, it's, it's debatable. Well, I know that he wrote, he said something like in, in, uh, in uh, he said, you're homosexuals, when he's saying the 1.1. The so I don't know if it's all homosexuals or, or, or what? Or, and yet the church says that they've changed their... homosexuality. The church said they changed that? The church has said that they, they uh, no longer, you know, think negatively about homosexuals. Or well, I've never heard the word faggot more than when I hang around people at gold to the point where I said, you know, I don't like it. My brother's gay, and he sure ain't one one. You know, I got great, great friends of mine that are gay. You know, you're telling me Leonardo da Vinci is one one? I, I don't think so. You know, if he's covertly hostile, I, I mean, he's got so much that he did that was good that, uh, you know, as much hostility as he may have exuded, I think he made up for it. You see? Yeah. I mean, that's, I, it just, I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. I never bought it. And, I, you know, I, again, in my own, my universe when I was in it, you know, uh, I just thought, you know, because you, 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 part of the thing when you're in it, you know, LRH is this super duper guy. So you make him into your own super duper guy, I suppose, probably. But you're, you're looking at uh, the current management, David Miscavige, COB, yeah. and you're, you're thinking, well, was he, is he in it for the money? What's your view of L. Ron Hubbard now? Well, my, you know, I mean, the, I, again, I don't have all the data. I read uh, some of the books that are out, that are uh, critical. Uh, Bareface Messiah and uh, Madman or Magician or whatever it was. Madman or Messiah. Right. That one, mate, and... Uh, Piece of Blue Sky. Piece of Blue Sky, I, 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 and, uh, you know, and then there's stories. Uh, yeah, I think that, you know. Um, so I don't know if all that's true. But it, it, it's consistent what... what it, uh, one of the ways that, for me that I can detect whether something is, is true or false is for inconsistencies. You know, you say the guy, you know, wore blue shoes and here's a picture of him in red shoes. So I never saw anything inconsistent. Uh, but, uh, you know, I didn't see it with my own eyes. But there's a, you know, the person seemed reliable. But again, here I am, I'm just pulling out of this thing and I thought LRH was reliable. And I don't. I don't think so now. I mean, I look, you know, and you, you know, the whole death and the death certificate and all this stuff, it's hard to argue with. You know, it seemed like he was, you know, and his kids, you know, like my wife is, she, my wife is an interesting person to talk to as well, because she's class five OT5, or class four OT5, and, uh, but she's like one of those people, she could probably, you know, do heroin for like, for a, a year and then just say, oh, you know what, it's making me too skinny and just put it down, you know what I mean? She's not a person, you know, and she, she was, you know, everybody loved her, you know, a lot of, you know, she was Jason McGay's wife to some degree over there, but uh, she's, a, she's a remarkable person in her own right, and, and one of the ways 
is that she just doesn't, she's one of those people you just can't brainwash. So when she got out, it was kind of like, you know, that's it. She just, you know, she didn't even talk. I mean, it was like, I said, you know, honey, I'm thinking about doing this. I think she was like, you know, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> Flip the burger. And yeah, you know, because I think they're, you know, because she had said, th she'd always pointed out things that were inconsistent also. And, uh, like what? well, all these fucking OTs that aren't OT. Like, that's a fucking OT. And what's an OT supposed to be? As somebody who's at least able. Somebody who can, like, walk and chew gum. I mean, there's people that are OT that are some of the most incompetent, uh, stupid people. I mean, when I say, I, I, that sounds, my definition of stupid is, is not, you know, necessary. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with, with, with uh, data or education. It has, it has to do with being able to say, uh, I mean, I'm talking about people put their hand on the stove and go, hey, 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 my hand's hot. My hand is hot. You know, I'm talking about that kind of stupid. I mean, I, and, and like, unreal, unreal. What's wrong with you? What, what's wrong with you? So that, you know, there's some real dopes that have, you know, but they have money and they're successful and they feel good about themselves because they're on seven. Well, I'm on seven now, it's fucking great. I gotta tell you, you gotta get on seven. Yeah, it's that kind of thing and it gives them a, a thing and you, and you look at them and it's, uh, and you know, and Scientologists know, and I talked to like Big Big Tur, I said, what the fuck, have we talked, what is that? You know, what is that? You know, because these people, you know, I might have had an issue with them, and they'll write me up, and they'll bring me to ethics. I got to handle this thing, and I, it'll, it'll be in the thing they wrote up. I'd say, w "What do you want me to say? It's true, I guess." And they go, "Well, you know, I'm not going to say the name. You know, he's, well, you know who he is." And I, I go, "Yeah, okay. We just had to bring it in because it's written up. You want to, you know, write anything? I don't give a fuck. Put it in the folder." You know, so I mean, it's, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, that was some of the stuff that she would just like, you know, really go nutty on. And even me, here I was. I told you, the further I went up the fucking bridge, the more Casey I became. You know, I met this girl and I was, you know, and she could see the more I do this shit, you know, whatever. It wasn't, it wasn't handling dick. So once you left, how did you leave? They, they wouldn't let me leave. They just, I mean, they just kept saying, no, 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 no. And so I said, okay, uh, give me my money back. And that what I had was, uh, you know, money on account. And, and per their policy, if you ask for your money, that was it. And they did give it back? Uh, they uh, they uh, gave my wife's money back. They offered to give me my money back and I'm still in a, uh, they want me to sign a piece of paper that says that I have no further claim against them. And I told them I can't do that because I feel I do. And I just said, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't have the, the time or the, the money to get into a legal battle. Even a, like, let's say a million dollars they probably owe me conservatively. And in this country, you could do pain and suffering. Maybe I could get a couple of extra bucks. I, I just don't... Uh, it's tough to, uh, to yeah, litigate yeah. Scientology. Yeah, but I'm not going to uh, sign some paper that says I don't, you know, I just couldn't. It's just my own integrity. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't say that. So what's happened uh, since you left Scientology? I was talking to your wife a little bit earlier, and she was talking about how, you know, the friends uh, cut off from her who, uh, you know, those who were still in Scientology. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, Jesus, I got a little, uh, I got a little son, too, and uh, he was in a little Scientology school, and uh, he was uh, four at the time, and uh, uh, no school was started, we moved 
so we're in the process of moving. So it was pretty, and moving to a big, we moved to this big property out here. It's a big different thing and it's a long way away. And uh, they kicked him out of school. It was a Scientology school. No, yeah, they kicked him out. They kicked, so he had nothing to do and it fucked him up. Uh, because he had, you know, why can't I see my friends? And that was just all his friends. And, uh, you know, and this was a time when, uh, you know, mom and dad were really busy. I'm working. We've got a little tiny infant at the time. And we're moving to a, an enormous thing. And plus, this whole place you're in was under construction. There was a period we were in, a, in, a, in a, one of those Airstream type of things, you know. Uh, and and no nothing for him to do, and that was that that so that was one. So yeah, my my uh, our friends, I mean I knew I I, I could see I was pulling away, so uh, I I'm kind of an antisocial personality anyway, so I don't really hang around people, you know. But my wife, you know, with the kids and stuff, uh, she uh, I remember there's a girl. A wonderful girl, Kelly, uh, Kelly Daniels, uh, terrific chick, and she found out, you know, some ethics person told her, and she just uh, was inconsolable, you know. Bro so I know there were a lot of broken hearts on the other side, and uh, now there's not. I saw some fucking kid like that I hardly know, you know, I do voiceovers too, so I went to a voiceover and there was some kid <coughs> from Scientology. And like usually if I'd see him at a voice, I'd be like, hey, Jason, you know. And he went, <laughs> you know, and I like, I just said, you fucking punk. That's all I said to him. It's just like, uh, you, that, it, it, you see that, that that's, that's it in a nutshell. You know, even, both of them are alive. The Jason, because we're Scientologists, and the, because you're out. And so when you look at the thing about, it's, it's really, really, the data shows from the fact, like Tori's husband left her. These people, their families are just, there's the proof. There's the proof. You're incapable of being a good friend if you're a Scientologist. Because it's, you're a Scientologist. And Jason Begay, the Scientologist, is willing to lose David. Is willing to sacrifice certainly the quality of my relationship with mom and dad and brothers and sisters and God knows who else that I could have made friends with that weren't Scientologists because whatever, maybe they just didn't understand or whatever. And my whole fucking, the, the most important thing in my life for me, again, going back to who I was as a kid, was a guy who was interested in people. And I wasn't like judging people like, I was just willing to be them. And maybe that's why I became an actor. And I grew up in New York. And I was like, this is people, people, people. I, every day growing up, I, I, I would meet somebody. You're on the subway. And now, you know, people go to the Home Depot with me. And we go and I hang and we talk and we do a thing. And that, that's who I am. And, and to some degree, you're not able to, to communicate. Because you can't, well, you're, you're, you've got a bubble around yourself. It's, it's this thing, and, it, and, and there's another way that part of the thing that, I, that always, that made it a little bit easier for me to get out of Scientology than other people, was that I would always look at the religion side. And it's like, because again, I was always interested in religion. And when they get exclusive, it, you got to wonder. You know, when, in other words, you know, the, I don't have anything against anybody's religion. It's fine. But, you know, the evangelicals are the only ones going to heaven. And the Muslims are the only one going to Allah or whatever. And, these, and the Scientologists are the only people who know. I go, well, I don't think so. I, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, and there's an interesting story. Like one of the things that, like they said, that like one of the things that took the biggest hits on religion in this century was it fucked up a lot of people. You know, World War I was a vicious, awful war, different than others would gases and mustard gas and it was terrible and people were slaughtered and it fucked up a lot of the Germans and the Americans when they go and they see the, their bodies and they saw that they had the same Bible. 
And they said, whoa, I thought God was on my side. And it's the same, and it apparently, so it's like this kind of, you know, when, when things are bringing people further away from others and, and, and distancing them, and Scientology to the degree that I'm a different species. You're a wog, I'm a homo novus. And I'm homo novus enough to be loving of you. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's pretty bad. You know, and then you look at that, you know, and radical Islam, you know, it's like, it's not that different. 